please. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you very much. So I'm going to talk about mechanisms and current practice regarding anesthesia with ketamine. And I have no conflict of interest. This is ketamine. This is S ketamine or plus ketamine, the left enantiomer. And it's a fencyclidine derivative. And this is R minus ketamine or right ketamine. And these two form equal proportions in racemic ketamine. But as you know, we have on the market since about five years, we have the S ketamine as a ketanest. So in racemic ketamine, which most of us are very familiar with, we have equal proportions of the left and the right enantiomer. It's like our hands, the right and the left. These two enantiomers have different actions. We know that the S-ketamine on the left is about twice as active as racemic ketamine. And racemic ketamine is about twice as active as R-ketamine. And this means that when we administer ketanest or S-ketamine, we use half the doses that we are used to from the racemic drug. Ketamine is believed to induce a dissociative state of anesthesia. Uh, we don't know exactly how that happens, but we believe that the limbic system, the hypothalamus, uh, are activated and that the, their connection with the cortex is disrupted somehow. Uh, we know, also know that ketamine may induce long-term neuronal plasticity within the brain. And this is very interesting when we turn to antidepressive action of ketamine uh, in a couple of minutes here. Uh, we think that it may promote long-term neurotransmission, and this is by interfering with protein synthesis and postsynaptic membrane density of the receptors. So I'll try to show you how this may work. Uh, when I now present what is currently believed to happen between the pre- and post-synaptic nerve cells, these are cell membranes on top here. Uh, and uh, we don't know where, what uh, which of these mechanisms are involved in anesthesia, in analgesia, or in antidepressive effect. But we know that ketamine has these effects. So ketamine depresses NMDA receptors, and by doing that, it promotes release of glutamine from the presynaptic membrane. I don't know why this sound is there, but... Uh, then you have, in the postsynaptic membrane, you have AMPA receptors, which are then, I don't know, which then activate calcium channels and promote the... Strange. Okay. Promotes the influx of calcium ions through the channel. So the green arrows here is a promotion and the red arrows are inhibition. So you have to close your, eyes, your ears between the pictures. I hope we can change the pictures here. Strange. Uh, calcium which enters the uh, postsynaptic cell uh, induces release of brain-derived neurotropic factor, BDNF, which are the yellow dots here. 
So they are released into the synaptic spatium. And then released BDNF activates tropomyosin receptor kinase B, and this activates phosphoenocytide 3 kinase and mitogen activated protein kinase. After that, there is further activation of protein kinase B and extracellular signal regulated kinase. And then finally, these two pathways activate mammalian target of rapamycin. There is a negative feedback loop which goes through glycogen synthesis, synthetase kinase 3. And here it's believed that lithium may have an action by promoting the green pathways and inhibiting the, in, the regulatory inhibitory path, pathway. And as we'll talk more about this in a while. From mammalian target of rapamycin, there is an activation of P70 ribosomal protein S6 kinase, and that in turn leads to protein translation and to synaptogenesis. So, somehow ketamine induces mRNA activation and synthesis of protein, receptor proteins. So, we might have an effect like this, where we have um, a further activation of the whole process by this P70 ribosomal protein S6 kinase. We know that ketamine maintains systemic hemodynamic stability better than other hypnotics. Um, and all hypnotics that we use have a, a negative inotropic effect on the heart and so has ketamine, but ketamine also reduces sympathetic reuptake of noradrenaline. So noradrenaline or norepinephrine uh, promotes hemodynamic stability when we use ketamine. If we have patients in very um, severe shock, uh, there is um, a less pronounced effect, as you all know. But still, the hemodynamic stability is much better than with normal, with other uh, hypnotics. Um, when I started studying medicine, and when I started working as an anesthesiologist in the 80s, uh, it was believed that you should never give ketamine to a patient with an intracranial injury. Uh, but further studies have shown that it does not raise intracranial pressure if we only prevent or avoid hypoventilation, that's very important. And the paradoxic situation is that if we use small doses of ketamine and spontaneous ventilation, maybe we have the highest risk of raising intracranial pressure in, in, in brain injured patients. Uh, as you know, it protects the airways better than other hypnotics. Uh, and you should never use it if you have a, a patient with a luxated uh, shoulder, for instance. I did that in my first years. I will never do it again. It won't work. So, we have psychotomimetic adverse effects. These are mainly believed to be related to the R enantiomer. Um, so, if you use S-ketamine, ketanest, and if you use a low dose midazolam before you give the ketamine, the risk of psychotomimetic effects are believed to be lower. Uh, there is also some, there are some studies suggesting that the R-ketamine form 
or particularly the R norketamine metabolite might have a better antidepressive effect than the racemic or the S ketamine. So there might be some sort of connection be between psychotomimetic effects, adverse effects, and um, antidepressive action. So this complex picture shows approximately where we are right now. And remember that, sorry, there is some sort of neuronal plasticity, which means that if you give a dose of ketamine, you have a long-lasting effect several days, where single doses can change receptor density in, in the synaptic transmissions in the brain. So with these words, I leave the microphone to you, Anders. Thank you. And Anders is going to talk about... Um, <laughs>